So I just want to talk about the theory of buying cars and flipping cars. I had a couple requests on should I become a body man and flip cars. I'm going to tell you guys right now there is zero money in flipping cars. Um, regardless of what you buy it in as um, a down south southern car, good to go, you're going to spend 30 grand on a car, ship it up to Canada or wherever you are. And to, to be a, a decent car you probably have to end up stripping it right back down again anyway whether it was already rebuilt or rebuilt uh, originally it needs to be stripped down the original paint and then you end up in the oh it needs this it needs that and the money that you're gonna put into it is gonna be exactly what the car is worth so now you have a car that you've sunk 20 30 grand into uh, 15 20 grand into and all you can do is drive it it's horrible on fuel you can drive it to car shows that's it um, now you might get lucky uh, and find a very valuable car and most likely it's gonna slip through your fingers and I'm still kicking to myself. When I was 17, uh, the neighbor had a 71 GTO Judge convertible with a 454 in it, numbers matching, that was a basket case. Um, the owner that had it before was working on it, slammed the hood, he kinked the hood from corner to corner because one hinge caught, so I had a crease down the hood. Um, it did have the dual ram air with a little lever that you pulled, open flaps on the hood, I believe. Um, it also, the floor was rotten, the interior was gone, the convertible top was no good. Basically, it was just a running car, but he wanted 5,500 bucks for it. And there was only 17 of those cars ever made. I worked all summer to save up to buy that car. And I never thought to give him money as I was making it to uh, hold the car. I had about four grand, 4,500 at the end of the summer. Not enough to buy it. He ended up selling it to somebody else. In 2008, I believe, one of those one of the 17 cars that are still around. I don't know if they're all still around or not, but it sold for almost 400 grand, I believe, in Jared, uh, Barrett Jackson. Um, easily well over a quarter million dollar car, regardless, finished. I could have bought that car, put it in the shop, even though I didn't have a shop, I didn't have anything. I could have put it in my dad's barn, put a tarp over it, and sold it probably as a basket case today for like 70, 80 grand, but those don't really happen. No matter what, you needed to fix it up. And Instead, uh, he sold it. The neighbor was selling an inline six, uh, puke green Mustang, automatic, and I had a girlfriend at the time. We sat in it, she looked at me, said you should buy this car, and my head was already stupid. I bought the car for 3,500 bucks. I think I sold it for 2,500. I lost my shirt on that one because Mustang was rotting out as well. They've got their weak points. These old cars, they're fast because the, the steel is, is light and thin, especially the Mustangs and, and not the full frame cars. And you're gonna lose your shirt on them whether you buy it. If you wanna make money, um, and, and I learned this from a good customer of mine uh, that runs an excavating company, buy equipment. Um, you guys saw that I sold the tractor. Here goes my tractor. Thought I was going for a ride, so we drive separate on the way home. And I sold the service truck. I almost doubled my money on both of those while using it for six or seven years. And that's the trick. Buy something like a skid steer, a backhoe, uh, anything, lawnmower if you're young, whatever. Um, you can make money on that if you don't sell it. Uh, your car, you're gonna park it all week and maybe go to a car show Friday, Saturday night, that's it. But a, 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 a skid steer or a backhoe or anything industrial, you can take it, um, buy it. Uh, generally, they're in rough shape because they are used as uh, construction equipment. But take good care of it, sand it down, paint it, make it look good. And, and his theory was always, even if it's an older machine, you go online, you find the newest model, you paint it the same colors, you don't have to advertise that it's brand new, but when it looks brand new, you get a good price for it. And uh, that way, even if you can't sell it, if it's sitting there and, and, you, and you can't sell it because the market's not there right now, you can still make money on it while you're using it. And even if you don't use it every day, all day, you still rent it out or, or um, weekend jobs here and there to work for, for uh, this and that. And, and I'm telling you that running a backhoe or a skid steer and getting good with that and digging holes is just as much fun as, as driving down the road in a car, in a fast muscle car. So we build these cars more. Um, there is money in it if you can get your customers to say, I want, I, I have some expendable income and, and we want to build these cars, that's great. Um, the GTO is mine with a buddy of mine's. 
And that's why it is taking longer to, to finish because um, it's not a, a huge priority. Uh, the Studebaker is a, is a customer of mine, a little bit of expendable income. We want a fun toy and we can go and buy a brand new Charger, a brand new Mustang Camaro and sign on the dotted line and pay 40 grand for a car, 60 grand for a car. But this is a lot more fun because this is, this is a one-off and it's something that we create. I really like the show For the Love of Cars because they're building cars for the love of the car. They're building an old Ford Econline van because um, that's how a lot of people made their money. That's how, that's how they started their plumbing business their electrical business and and that vehicle means a lot to them um, a lot of these old muscle cars is the guys that uh, that was their first car now they have some expendable income they don't mind throwing 50 grand at a car to relive those memories of when they were driving the car but and horrible investment because these guys are petering off and in, and in 15 years all those cars are going to be worth next to nothing I'm actually amazed at how much the environmental uh, attitude is changing the the gas guzzling the the whole Volkswagen scandal everybody's going green and the internal combustion I can start to see the turn that I do think that if it wasn't for the governments and and the big businesses making all the money off of the uh, fuels now, the internal combustion is on its way out. Um, we're still a long ways away from that, but but mark my words, it's gonna happen. Now the Model T's and the Model A's, those guys are all in their 80s and their 90s, and those cars are worthless. So you're gonna throw 15, 20, 25 grand into a car, you're gonna be lucky to get 10 for it anymore. Nobody cares, nobody wants them. And as the, the time goes on, the next model is gonna come uh, and become worthless. And and some of those cars are gonna be the Style Master and the, and the Commander but I'm building it for the love of the car. I found the commander out in the field and I spotted off a 92 year old guy. And I said, you know what, I, I love the look of the car. I don't want to see it go to the scrap. You, you know what, let me give you some money for it and I'm going to do my best to put it back on the road. And the, the style master, or sorry, I keep calling it style master, but it's actually the fleet master. Just figured that out. But the fleet master, same thing. Not a very desirable car, but we're, we're using the car to, to work with the kids and stuff. And, and that alone makes it worth restoring. And uh, it's gonna be neat driving down the road. Is it gonna, it'll turn some heads, but really the, the, the car's not gonna be worth any more than, than the amount of money that's being put into it. Um, we might even lose some on it. Uh, but you know what? It's an old, awesome car, same with the GTO. Maybe we can dress up in a suit and drive around for some weddings, be a chauffeur for a wedding, and, and that's just it, 500 bucks on a Saturday afternoon. Maybe we can make some of our money that way. I think that'd be kind of neat. So we might uh, might end up doing that. Um, another nice luxury old man car that, that you know, would break out a bottle of champagne, and I think it'd be a fun afternoon. But that way, even if we don't sell it for as much money, at least you can still, um, uh, have some sort of income other than uh, than selling it, but uh, yeah, it really think about these cars, guys, and and. I know you young guys buying, I've seen lots of new trucks and stuff out there. Working with a guy yesterday, he just bought a brand new truck. He's got a thousand kilometers on it. You know, leaving the dealership, you've lost five grand instantly. These these SRT8s and that, I've seen uh, like half, <laughs> four years, your, your vehicle's worth about half of what you paid for it. So if, if, if you're thinking about becoming a mechanic to start flipping cars, it's not gonna happen. You can make money at a body shop spending other people's money, but if you think that you're gonna take them on, take these cars and flip them, it's just not gonna happen. Equipment, that's the way to go. Like the forklift, I didn't pay much for the forklift. I'm going online, I'll see what the new color codes are, take the brochure to the paint guy, so you mix up these colors, and, and from 40 feet away, it'll, the people think that it's a brand new forklift. I could probably triple my money on it if I was to sell it. So, um, and if I don't sell it, I'm still using it around the shop. So keep that in mind, guys. And uh, yeah, if you have any uh, questions, give me, shoot me a line. And if you're thinking about buying something and, and want a second opinion, my opinion is just that. It's nothing more, but this is, uh, this is my two cents. Here we go. So follow a variety of projects that include conversions and repairs to anything from Ferraris to chainsaws. And check out the Tape Boss, my newest invention that's coming to market. And remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich. <laughs>